Hey everyone, this is Brandon with our first ever physics tutorial. Now, this is meant to be supplementary, so don't expect to learn things only from this. I may reference things that you don't understand during this tutorial. Hopefully, I'll explain them, but in the event that I don't, please go to the Contact Us page on our website and fill out the form, or shoot me an email at bestudios.physics at gmail.com. Now, if the problems that I am covering aren't the same as what you have, no worries. Hopefully it will be similar to what you have in the concepts that it covers. I have posted all of the problems I will be working below this video on our site. Now this problem bank covers constant motion and should be the first unit for all you guys. Alright, so on to number one. You are given a position versus time graph for this problem. Now, pretty much always in a science class, time is going to be on the x-axis. And now the question is asking where the object moving is farthest away from its starting point. The biggest thing that you need to understand now is that the negative on a graph isn't special in any way. In physics, negatives pretty much always symbolize direction. So if I were to walk negative 15 kilometers, then I just walked 15 kilometers in the opposite direction of whatever someone chose to indicate as the positive direction. So, in other words, if you have a starting point right here, and you say that the positive direction is that way, then if I were to walk in that direction, I would just be walking in the negative direction. Nothing special other than direction. Now, if you don't understand that at this moment, we'll go into it again later, so don't worry. Well, if we look at the graph, and we were to take a straight line and draw from each point down straight to the x-axis like that uh, the line for B would be longest now the problem is simply to uh, is simple to calculate for one reason it is a position versus time graph so it's a very simple problem but it is a building block alright moving on to the next problem number two for this problem, we'll actually be using an equation. So by this point, hopefully you'll have an equation sheet that your teacher has given you. But if not, I'll be posting the equations that you'll be needing for this problem bank on the web page. So in the problem, we have a car traveling east with a certain velocity, and then with a different velocity. The problem wants you to use the guess method, but before we even start that, we need to make a sketch. So, here is our little car and I hope you don't mind my artistic talents. And in every sketch there are a couple of things that we always need to include. The first of these is a positive direction. And that, as I was kind of talking about earlier, just helps whenever you have things going in different directions. If your teachers talked about vectors, that's the whole thing about the positive direction. Now, in addition to that, we've also got the velocity of the car that's moving in that direction, the same direction as the positive direction. So, both velocities in the problem are going to be positive. Now, one of the last things we need to be sure to include is its initial x value. That also can be written as that. It's just a matter of personal preference as to which one you want to use. And also, we need to include its final x position. And the distance between the two is known as the change in x. And you might be asking what this little triangle thing is. That is just representative of change. So if you were to have its x final position minus its x initial position, you would end up with a change in x because that's just the total distance it's traveled. All right, so now we're actually going to start the guess method. The g in guess stands for given. And so here we're just going to put all the stuff that the problem gives to us. So the first thing that we can put in the givens is the x initial. And even though they didn't give that to us in the problem, we can pretty much assume that to be zero kilometers. And that's just the simplest thing so it isn't confusing later on. Secondly, we've got our two velocities. We'll call them velocity A and velocity B for the duration of the problem. Velocity A is 80 kilometers per hour, and velocity B is 40 kilometers per hour. 
okay? Next, we're going to have the change in time for A and the change in time for B, or the time that it spends going at each speed. And once again, here's the little triangle thing. So the change in time for velocity A is two and a half hours, and for velocity B, it's one and a half hours. The second part of the guess method is the U, which is unknown. And actually, there are two unknowns in this problem. First, they want to sol you to solve for the change in x, which is right here, and the average velocity. And we'll get to um, finding the average velocity second because we need the change in x in order to find that. So the third part of the guess method, the E, stands for equation. And now, you should only have one equation to use in this unit, but I'm just going to put it here. It's x final is equal to x initial plus v average t. Another way to write that is x is equal to x with the little circle plus v average t. Either way, it means the exact same thing. It's just a personal preference as to which one you want to use. And so, since the initial x is equal to 0, we can pretty much just eliminate that from the problem just to make it a little simpler to look at. And since we don't have an average velocity, what we're going to need to do is find the change in x for each of the two velocities and then just add those together. So we've got change in x for a is equal to velocity a time a and then change in x b is equal to velocity b times time b. And you add change in x a and change in x b to find the total change in x. Okay, so you've added those together and you're going to find the change in x. So the next part of the guess method is the first s, which stands for substitute. So what we're going to do is we're going to find each of these individual values first. So we've got the velocity a, which is 80 kilometers per hour. And we've got velocity b, which is 40 kilometers per hour. And we've got the times, so time a, which is... 2.5 hours and we've got 1.5 hours and these are going to end up being added together. Now when you substitute things in you always want to include your units in there just because it makes it easier to find out what unit you're going to be left with afterwards. And so this is kilometers per hour times hours. So therefore, those two cancel out and you're left only with kilometers, which is what we want for an x distance. So if you would multiply those together and add them together, the final s or the solution that you would be left with is 260 kilometers. So we can add that up here, 260 kilometers. The next part of the problem wants us to find the average velocity. Now in order to find the average velocity that it traveled at over the entire time that it was going, we need to add together the two times. So what we're going to do is say that the overall change in time is equal to four hours. So once again, back to equations, we're going to use the exact same equation. So 
x final is equal to v average t. And this time, since we're trying to find the v average, we're going to make a working equation, which is a working equation is where you have isolated the variable that you are solving for. So in order to isolate this, we would divide both sides by t and be left with x final over change in time, or just time, is equal to the velocity. So if we substitute that in, we would get 260 kilometers over 4 hours is equal to the velocity, which for the final solution would be 65 kilometers per hour. Hopefully you understood that. If not, you know, you can just email us, like I said earlier, and uh, just let us know what you didn't understand, and we'll be happy to help. All right, so now moving on to problem number three. For number three, you are given a graph like this. Now, I know I'm not the most artistically talented person, so I tried to draw it as best I could, but you can get the general idea from this. Now, in order to do this problem, which asks to us to find the average velocities for the four time intervals, we're going to have to use the exact same equation that we used in the last problem. So it's going to be the x final is equal to x initial plus v average t. Um, the only difference in this problem is that the x initial changes from time interval to time interval. So the x initial at interval for interval A is at 3, while the um, x initial for interval C is at 4. So we're going to have to take that into consideration. Also, instead of just having t, it should actually be change in time because we've got multiple times. So we've got, say, 4 seconds for the end of time A and zero seconds for the beginning. But for time B, we've got seven seconds for the end and four seconds for the beginning. So we're going to have a pretty long given chart. So for our givens, we're going to have the x initials, the x finals, the time initials, and the time finals for all four of our time intervals. So if you'll give me one second so I can just do a quick little cut and paste on these. All right, so now we're going to start filling in the values. Um, I'm actually not going to take the time to show you guys me filling in the values because hopefully you'll be able to figure that out and I'm just going to pause the video really quick and uh, when I unpause it I'll have them filled out. Alright and we're back so as you can see I filled out all of the values from this graph and so now we're going to use them to find our unknown which is the average velocity. So if you remember from what we did earlier, for our working equation, we all we had was x final over t, which would equal the average velocity. Now, in this, we've got a little extra to play with because the x initial is not equal to zero. So what we're going to end up with is x final minus x initial. So we're finding the distance it traveled from the beginning of the time period to the end of the time period over the time final minus the initial time. So we're finding how long that time period was. And that is going to be equal to the average velocity. So we're just going to go straight into that. And um, so once again, this is just substitution. It's plugging the values straight in. And it's going.